Haiti aided Latin American independence movements, and all of those act like they forget about Haiti. Many aren't aware that without Haiti's help, many countries in Latin America would not have obtained their independence. Simon Bolivar arrived in Haiti in December 1815 downtrodden and accompanied by Venezuelan families and soldiers after being badly trampled by the Spaniards in Cartagena, Bolivia as he attempted to free South American countries which are now Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Chile, modern Bolivia. Upon his arrival in Les Cays, he was desperate and sought refuge and help to conquer the Spanish army. President Alexander so Haiti Bolivar, with a lot of ships, guns, money, or even some of bravest Haitian soldiers there was at the time. In 1815, Spain's defeat of Simón Bolivar's revolutionary army in Venezuela nearly extinguished the dream of independence in South America. After the loss, Bolivar sought political asylum in the only free republic in Latin America, Haiti. At the time, Haiti was a safe harbor for revolutionaries and formerly enslaved Africans. Although the Republic made promises to colonial powers that it would not intervene in freedom and independence struggles, Haiti continued to support rebellions, intercepted ships carrying enslaved people, and freed its human cargo. For Haiti, colonialism and slavery anywhere posed a threat to the Republic's own independence and humanity. Thus, when a defeated Bolivar landed in Port-au-Prince, President Alexander understood the significance of the man who led the liberation movement. Peshin offered Bolivar 1,000 rifles, ammunition, and other supplies, he also provided hundreds of Haitian sailors and soldiers who had fought in the Haitian Revolutionary War. The offering came with one condition, Bolivar had to abolish slavery in South America when he founded a new republic, Bolivar agreed. He and his army once again took on Spain, returning to Haiti a second time for assistance, and triumphantly declared Venezuela an independent country in 1821. After later defeating Spain across South America, Bolivar declared himself president of Gran Colombia, present-day Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, and Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. Foreshadowing Latin America's present relationship to Haiti, Bolivar broke his promise to Peshin. Rather than wholly abolishing slavery, Bolivar sought to maintain Latin America's racial and class hierarchy so that white elites like himself would not fall to a partocratia, a so-called mulatto takeover. Having seen what it meant for black people to be truly free in Haiti, when his own black and indigenous generals launched a coup against his growing authoritarianism in 1828, Bolivar complained bitterly that they had the audacity to want absolute equality. As a warning to South America's black and brown population, he had the mixed-race leader of the coup, José Padilla, executed. Nearly two centuries later, many of these nations have been as openly hostile to Haitian immigrants as they are to their own black ladings populations. Latin America owes Haiti its independence. The Haitian Revolution offered a model for a successful insurrection against a colonial power. For instance, the Haitian Revolution and its Declaration of Independence stated that we must take any hope of re-enslaving us away from the inhuman government. In the end, we must live independent or die. This allowed the black and brown majority of the Americas to see their humanity recognized and offered a model for an equitable society. From 1791 to 1821, the success of the Haitian Revolution sparked a series of rebellions by enslaved people in Santo Domingo, present-day Dominican Republic, which shares an island with Haiti. According to Dominican historian Quisque Laura Hugi, these movements had bigger objectives, such as the overthrow of colonial rule, the implantation of racial equality, or the union with Haiti. Haiti responded to the cries for freedom from the enslaved people of Santo Domingo twice. In 1801, following a major rebellion on the Boca de Nigua sugar plantation, Toussaint Louverture, the architect of the Haitian Revolution, chose that site to announce the abolition of slavery in Santo Domingo. But freedom was short-lived. France later captured Louverture and took over Santo Domingo in a strategic effort to recapture Haiti long after the revolution had been won. 
Like Bolivar, Dominican rebels appealed to Haitian rulers for arms and support as they attempted to overthrow colonial rule and unify with Haiti. With the support of the black majority, Haiti's president Jean-Pierre Boyer abolished slavery and proclaimed Dominican emancipation for a second time on February 9, 1822. Hispaniola became the only independent nation in the Caribbean and the only region in the Americas where slavery was abolished. But 22 years later, after the unification period with Haiti ended, the white elite re-annexed Santo Domingo to Spain. Black Dominican rebels understood the implicit threat of re-enslavement and again implored Haiti for its support in overthrowing Spanish rule. Defying threats from Spain, Haiti supplied the Dominican rebels with arms, fighters, and safe harbor. Dominicans, with the help of their Haitian allies, defeated the Spanish in 1865. Today, however, Haitians face the most extreme human rights abuses in the Dominican Republic. In the neighboring country, many people of Haitian descent are trapped in a form of indentured servitude on sugar plantations, while their descendants are stripped of their citizenship. Hobbled by foreign interventions, political instability, and natural disasters, the former French colony has long suffered from underdevelopment. Haiti is still paying for indigent slavery or for helping other nation end slavery. Few countries have struggled with development like Haiti. Since breaking free from French colonial rule over two centuries ago, the Caribbean state has weathered multiple foreign interventions, chronic political instability, and devastating natural disasters. The confluence of these forces has transformed what was once the wealthiest colony in the Americas into the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Spanish settlers arrived on the island of Hispaniola, which comprises modern-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic in 1492. Within a quarter century, diseases brought by Europeans, such as smallpox and measles, decimated the indigenous Taino population. Over the next three centuries, European colonizers imported hundreds of thousands of enslaved people from Western and Central Africa to harvest sugar, coffee, and timber, all lucrative exports. In the early 1600s, French traders established an outpost on the western third of the island, which Paris annexed as the colony of Saint-Domingue several decades later. In the late 1700s, Toussaint Louverture and Jean-Jacques de Salines, both formerly enslaved, led a rebellion against French rule that culminated with the creation of Haiti in 1804. The first post-colonial black republic, Haiti, became a beacon of abolition, self-determination, and racial equality. Today Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. More than half the population lives under the poverty line, and many people rely on subsistence farming to feed their families. The country is also heavily dependent on external revenue. Between 2010 and 2020, the United Nations allocated more than $13 billion in international aid for Haiti, most of which has funded disaster relief missions and development programs. Meanwhile, remittances from the Haitian diaspora have steadily risen over the last few years, totaling a record $3.8 billion in 2020, or nearly 24% of Haiti's gross domestic product. As a first free nation in the world the question will be, why is that Haiti still in this position? Where its people can't even effort to eat or be free from gangs and corruptions. The answer would be to those who hate the fact that Haiti was free from slavery and still paying for the movement as we speak today. Even all those countries we Haitians for them to be free. Today, they repaying Haiti by disrespecting the Haitians' nation. It true what they say. The one you help, most of the time will they same one who backstab you in the back. That's life and the Haitians' people are still learning from it. As always thank you for watching. Please in your way out do not forget to like, share, and subscribe the channel for more videos.